Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is Dee, and today is a development tutorial day. We are going to be looking at sense of scale and how to get the scale of objects right in your environment when you're building virtual reality environments. Um, in particular, we're going to be doing this tutorial on the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2, along with the personal edition of Unity 5, which is a totally free uh, game development SDK. Um, now you can see here I have this kitten and this can. Uh, we're going to be seeing more of them later. I'm actually going to redo this whole project from scratch, but this can, if I were to uh, go into play mode right now by hitting the play button and click on the can and, and take a look at this can, I would see it being just the size that I expect the Coke can to be, like if I bought it out of a vending machine. And it's really important in virtual reality to get the scale of things exactly right um, because it's very much more apparent in virtual reality because there are a lot more uh, scale cues available which suggest the actual size of things than there are when you're playing a game on a monitor. And um, this shows up in a lot of ways. Um, in traditional games where the scale is just inconsistent and not right, um, and and they get away with it or sometimes it's even desirable because they're able to give the right they, they give the impression they want to give but in virtual reality you things start looking silly because all the scale just starts looking wrong the moment you get inside so i'm going to go ahead and close out of here i'm actually going to return my current license so i can show you how i set up unity and um if you go over, so uh, one of the things you're going to need, you're going to need uh, certain tools from the Oculus website. I'm going to lead you through all the steps. So just go to developer.oculus.com, click on Downloads. Uh, this website might change in the future, but this is what it looks like right now. Uh, the current version of the SDK is 0.5.0.1. I expect this to also work with future versions. Um, in the future, uh, Oculus Rift support is actually going to be directly integrated into Unity. Right now, that's still kind of beta and um, not totally functional. So I would suggest uh, for now sticking with the Oculus plugin. The Oculus plugin is down here at the bottom of the uh, Oculus downloads list. It's labeled Unity 4 integration. It's a tiny little download. So just click on that and you will have to agree to all of this, which of course I've read all of it. Why would I agree to something I haven't read? And you'll grab the zip file. You can open it up. You can extract it. And here it is, Oculus Unity integration. Now we're going to need this Unity package inside of here. We're going to be loading it into our environment in a little bit after we set up Unity. Uh, additionally, if you have not already, you do need to download the latest Oculus runtime, the corresponding Oculus runtime for the Unity 4 integration that you downloaded. And you're going to need to install that and that will require a reboot of your PC. And if you need to go do that, do that now. Just resume this video from this point when you're done. All right, now we're going to get started with Unity. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Unity. Um, I have a few versions of Unity installed here, but the version I'm going to be using for this is Unity 5. So when you start it up the first time, it'll say connecting the license server. If you have a pro version of Unity that you've purchased, you can enter your serial number here and you'll get this, this cool black background on your UI and you'll feel all pro, um, but you don't need that. You can just click on Unity 5 Personal Edition. This is a uh, version that has all the functionality of Unity Pro. Um, and the only restriction is that um, you don't earn or receive funding of more than $100,000 during the most recently completed fiscal year. Um, I don't think that applies to most of you. Most of you are not large game development studios. So this is totally fine. Just click the box, click OK, and we're ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead, I've created a couple test projects here called Scale Test. I'm actually going to make a new one for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to call it Scale Test 3. Click Create Project. All right. Now um, I've got my Unity 501 Personal Edition all ready to go. I've got my project set up. And the first thing I need to do is grab that Oculus Unity integration package and just click and drag it down here into my assets. And it's going to say importing package. Click on import. 
then I am going to go um, I'm going to go ahead and create a simple scene here. I'm going to use this little create button in the hierarchy tab. This will be the quickest way to create my scene. I'm going to delete the main camera, click on it and press delete. Then I am going because we're going to be using the Oculus camera, so we don't need the original camera that Unity creates for us. Then I'm going to create 3D object plane. This is going to be the plane that we're standing on. And I'm going to create a cube for us to look at. There's a cube just floating a little bit above the plane, as you can tell from the shadow. And finally, we are going to go into our OVR assets. OVR stands for Oculus VR. And go into prefabs and grab OVR player controller and just click and drag it right in here. I'm going to use the arrow to lift it up above the plane so it's not inside it and it's sitting on top of it. Then I'm going to rotate by clicking on the green circle. I'm going to rotate the yaw so that it's turning right until it's facing the cube. And you can see that pyramid indicating the viewing frustrum so you can tell whether it's able to see the cube at a given time. All right, so let me make sure I'm recording. I'm all good here. I'm going to actually make sure this window gets out of the way. There we go. And now I am going to, um, I'm about ready to start playtesting. Uh, but there's a problem. If I click play right now, what will happen is the Oculus Rift will start tracking my head. As you can see, I'm moving it and the view is moving around. But the problem is that the view is displaying in this tiny window. Um, and I, I can't view it on the Rift if it's displaying in a tiny window on my monitor. So we're going to fix that. Um, so there are a few steps we need to do to fix that. First of all, um, I recommend that you go into your, um, actually, I'm going to go into my resolution settings. And so I'm going to right click on my desktop, do screen resolution. And then I'm going to click on my Oculus Rift DK2 monitor. And I'm going to click on Advanced Settings. By the way, I recommend you make your main monitor your main display while doing this. Otherwise, um, it, it'll get pretty annoying. Um, so just let the Oculus Rift DK2 monitor be your extended monitor. And click on Advanced Settings. Click on Monitor. And I recommend you set the screen refresh rate down from the default of 75 to 60. Um, this is assuming that your monitor is 60 hertz. They should match. Um, and you can see what refresh rate your monitor is by doing the same thing with your monitor. So my monitor is 60 hertz, and that's because I have a 4K monitor. It doesn't go any higher. If your monitor supports 75 hertz, go ahead and set them both to 75. That's fine. They just have to match. Now that I've set that up, I'm going to go back into Unity. And I'm going to actually use a little asset store script that was provided by Guy Godin, the developer of a um, of virtual desktop. Um, I'm going to go into Window, click on Asset Store. This will pop up the Asset Store window. And this text, you can do this in the Asset Store window, but the text is really tiny and hard to see on the video. So I'm actually going to go over to my browser. And I'm going to go to assetstore.unity3d.com and this is just a bit bigger so you guys can see it. You can do all the same things that you can do in the Asset Store window here on the Asset Store website and I'm going to search for Virtual Desktop. When I do, you, one of the first results that comes up will be Virtual Desktop Play Mode which is a script by Guy Godin. I'm going to click on that. This is a free script and I can just click um, I can click download if it hasn't been downloaded already. In my case, it has. And then I can click open in Unity. And when I do, then if it's already been downloaded, I can go ahead and click import. This will automatically import the package. I can click import again. And now the script will be in my project. So if you go, if you look at the assets tree over here on the left hand side, down at the bottom, is going to be virtual desktop. And um, now that this has been added to my project, all I have to do is click the play button 
and this should show up correctly on my Oculus Rift DK2 display when I click the play button. Now in my case, I'm currently having a small issue. Um, I'm not sure exactly what causes this, but the um, the window doesn't show up in the right place. It shows up kind of half on my monitor and half on my Rift. Um, so in order to fix this, I just make a small fix to the virtual desktop uh, play mode script. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click in virtual desktop editor, and I'm going to double click on this vdplaymode.cs file. It's going to open up in mono develop. And then I'm going to just scroll down to round about here. So HMD position. This is where it gets the position of the head mount display uh, viewport on your, um, on your screen. So if we go back into resolution, screen resolution, you can see that I have my 1920 uh, 1080 monitor over here. And over here, I have my Rift DK2. So if 00, zero is in the upper left corner, then my Rift is at coordinate 1920 zero because 1920 is how wide this left monitor is. So I can just go into my script and I can adjust and do HMD position dot X equals 1920 hmd position dot y equals zero and again you may not have to do this i have to do this to work around this issue i'm seeing some of you might encounter the same issue some of you might not and um if if your um if your rift monitor was on the left hand side you would probably do something different here um you might for example do negative 1920 in some cases you might do zero if it's like your primary monitor just um try different things and see what works for you and I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to return to Unity. And now I'm going to click the play button. And I am good to go. I'm going to go ahead and just put on my Rift here. And I am now running the game mode full screen. I have the cube in front of me. I have the sun in the sky. I have this sharp directional light going on. Everything is working fine. It's totally smooth. There's no judder. There's no problems with head tracking. Um, if you have your, if you don't set your refresh rate up, like I showed you, you can sometimes encounter judder when you do this. But since I did, everything is nice and smooth. And let me show you a trick now. Um, so say that I wanted to go click in my editor and click on this cube here. So let's zoom in. I'm just looking through my nose hole to see what I'm doing on my monitor. I'm going to click on the cube. I'm going to click on the scale tool, and then I'm going to use the scale tool to make the cube bigger. And sure enough, the cube is getting smaller and bigger right before my eyes as I'm inside the simulation, which is pretty amazing. So say that I wanted to make my cube about the size of, I don't know, like a toaster. Does that look like it's about toaster size? Let me see. I'm going to make my cube that size, and then I'm going to move my mouse back over to the game window on the right-hand side and click on it. And now I can use my WASD to walk up to the cube. You can turn with your mouse while you're clicked inside the game view. And you can also use the Q and E keys to turn in sharp increments like this. So this is all built into the OVR player controller. And I can walk up to this cube, and I can get a reasonably good idea of how big this cube is just by standing next to it and looking at how big it is. Um, so this is kind of the basics of how to adjust the scale of an object. And you can do it in the editor while the game view is running, so you can go ahead and get all the same um, scale cues that your users would be getting when they are running uh, your Unity application. Now. I've adjusted the size of this cube, um, I need to be careful because if I leave play mode now, the size of the cube will automatically return to its original size. And I actually want to remember what I adjusted the scale to. So I'm going to go ahead and take off my Rift. And now I'm going to go back to my monitor. And what, uh, there's a little trick you can use to remember how you adjusted the scale. All you got to do is go over to your Transform tab. Go ahead and click on uh, the little gear in the upper right corner of your Transform tab. 
and click on copy component. This is going to copy the um, it's going to copy the transform component into our clipboard and save it. Now click the play button or hit Control P. The key will return to its original size, and then go click on the gear icon again and click paste component values. Now the cube returns to the size that we set while we were in game mode. So this is an easy way to adjust the scale of any object in your scene while the application is running, while you're looking at it in the Rift, and then uh, set the scale to, um, and then set the scale back in edit mode to what you want it to be. So there's um, there's a problem with this, which is um, so this is this is a great approach to use when you're adjusting the size of something and you kind of just want to eyeball it and you don't know exactly how big you want it to be. Um, but there are some there are some issues with this. First of all, we have no frame of reference in this um, in this scene. We have um, we have the distance between our eyes, which provides stereoscopic cues, and that gives us some sense of how big things are. But if we want to make sure we get scale right, we want to have more cues available, as many as possible, in order to provide the strongest possible sense of scale so we can make accurate scale estimates. So in other words, what that means is that in order to size things the size we really want, we have to start inserting some objects into the scene, which will act as frames of reference to indicate um, how big things are in the scene. So we can compare one object to the other object that's next to it. So. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I want to quickly uh, remind you of this. If you are dealing with scale in your application, it is absolutely critical that you go into your Oculus configuration utility by clicking on the I in your taskbar, and that you set up, um, you click on Advanced, and you set up your IPD correctly. Um, there's a measuring utility built into the tool. You can use to measure it. Um, and additionally, it's very, very important that you set your player height correctly to match your actual height in real life. So your IPD and height have to both be correct, and both of these have a very strong effect on your perceived sense of scale. Um, for this video, I'm just using the average, um, the average height and the average IPD so that you guys can watch the video and get a relatively consistent sense of scale. Um, but I recommend that you set it to your own personal IPD and height during development to get it as precise as possible. Um, you can also see here I have a checkbox that says disable health and safety warning. Um, if you're doing a lot of this game mode testing in Unity, you're, every time you press that play button, you're going to see the uh, health and safety warning pop up on your DK2 for like 10 seconds. It's really annoying. So um, this box does not normally appear in the configuration tool. In order for it to appear, you have to, uh, you have to do a little uh, registry hack. So I'm going to um, actually show you how to do that really quickly. I'm going to go over here. So this is a, uh, a post on Reddit that someone made a few months ago. And it shows um, this is up to date with uh, 0 0.5.0.1. 0 .1. Uh, it might change in the future. But the gist of it is you just have to run this line from an elevated command prompt, and it will modify your registry in the correct way uh, to enable that option in the configuration utility. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that. I'm just going to um, I'm going to right click on command prompt, hit run as administrator. And now I have administrator colon command prompt. If you're not sure what I did there, just look up elevated command prompt on Google. And then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to link this uh, post in the, in the uh, video description. And then I'm going to right click on my command prompt and hit paste. And then all I have to do is hit enter. Um, in my case, it says it exists because I already did it. And it's done. And now if you just go back into your configuration utility or close out of it if you already have it open and open it again, you should see that option to disable the health and safety warning. I highly recommend doing that. Otherwise, you're going to get very frustrated very quickly. All right. Now let's go back into Unity. And I said that we need some objects in this scene that we know the scale of so that we can assess relative scale. So what are some things that you know the scale of? This is going to depend very much on your daily experience. 
as I am a person living in the United States, one of the objects that has a very consistent size that I encounter all the time is a Coca-Cola can. And so I decided to go into my asset store. I'm gonna go back to the asset store. And I just decided to search for soda. I searched for soda. There are soda machines. There are various other soda props. And I found this very cheap one. It's only $2, and it says soda cans. And these are some, some very nice models for cans. They look a lot like real soda cans. Um, they have the nice generic labels, which uh, avoid uh, trademark infringement. And I just purchased it for $2. I actually recommend you just purchase this because this is a very handy asset for this particular exercise, and it's cheap. And then just click, um, once you bought it, click Open in Unity. And then click Import. I'm going to close out of the Asset Store window. And now if I look in my assets, I will see an asset labeled Soda Cans. Now, there are several different models here. There's a crushed can, there's kind of a semi-crushed can, and there's a regular non-crushed can. I'm going to be using the regular non-crushed can, um, and I'm just going to drag it out here onto my field. And I'm going to lift it up above the plane. And you can see the can there, but it's really tiny. And I can kind of zoom in on it. I can hit the F button to go up to it. So you can see, and if I hold down the Alt key and uh, left drag, left click and drag, I can move around it. I can see it looks reasonably proportioned for a soda can. But um, if we actually look at how big it is, so um, I'll, I'll show you how to determine how big something is. But the, the short explanation is this can is way too small. And by too small, what I mean is that in Unity, um, you always want to make sure, to the maximum extent you can, that you stick to a scale of one unit equals one meter. And um, that's, you're not always going to be able to do that if you have an application where you're like super tiny or in a super large world, then you may have to adjust that scale. But for the most part, for most applications, you can just stick to the standard of one unit equals one meter. And so if something is, say, 0 0.01 units wide, that means it's one centimeter wide. All right, so how do we know what size this can is? The scale is just 1, 1, 1. That just means it's the original size, whatever the mesh's size is. So that doesn't tell us very much. To actually measure the size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the hierarchy. I'm going to click on the root Coca can. So this, this can has two components. It has the tab on the top, and it has the cylinder part. And I want to get the size of them both together. So I'm going to click on the Coca can parent, which contains both. I'm going to click on Add Component. I'm going to click on New Script. We're going to do a very simple script here in C Sharp. And I'm going to call it Measure Size. I'm just writing that all as one word, Measure Size, with capital M, capital S. And I hit Enter. And now we have a script. The script doesn't do anything yet. I'm going to click on the gear next to the script. Click on Edit Script. This is going to bring it on up in MonoDevelop, which is the default uh, script editor for Unity. And I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, property to represent the size of this object. So this um, to create a property that you can see in the Unity editor, you always have to put the word public in front of it. The type of the property is going to be vector Three. Vector 3 just means it has three numbers together. The three numbers are going to represent the width, height, and length in this case. And I'm going to call it size. Now, update, which is called once per frame, this is where I'm going to retrieve the size. And I'm going to do it every single frame. And the point of doing this is that if I change the uh, if I change the scale while the game is running, I can see the size get updated in real time. So I'm going to set the size using size equals. Um, 
and then I'm going to type get component. So, or sorry, not get get component. Let me actually consult um, consult my page here. So, this is what I'm going to be using: get component mesh renderer dot bounds. I'm going to link you this page also in the description. So, uh, the mesh renderer in this case refers to um, refers to the component responsible for rendering the the um, the mesh and and making it appear on the screen and it it's also able to determine how big the mesh is because it has um, it has control over the mesh so I'm just going to copy this little piece of code get component mesh render dot bounds I'm going to paste it in here I'm going to save that then I'm going to return to unity and now at first, if I um, at first it's not going to show it, but then if I click on the play button, compilers have to be fixed. Oops, <laughs> I made a small mistake here. Dot bounds retrieves both the position and the size. I only want the position. Uh, I only want the size, which is described by the extents member of bounds. So I just typed dot extents. I used tab completion there. Then I'm going to go back into Unity, and now you will see size appear under the measure size script over here in the inspector. And uh, initially, it's going to show zero zero zero. That's because it's not running yet. If we click the play button to start running, then we will see Oh, I'm actually doing this wrong. So the problem here is the size is currently zero zero zero. Why is it? And the reason is because we're trying to measure the size of Coca Can, but Coca Can is actually just an empty parent object intended to contain both the latch and the cylinder of the can. And the um, and because Coca Can is just an empty object, it has no size. And so you can't measure the parent object. Instead, um, I'm going to just try and measure this cylinder sub object. And to do that, I'm going to take the script that I put on Coca Can, and I'm going to move it to the cylinder by clicking and dragging it on the cylinder. Now I'm going to run again. And now you can see a size showing up on the measure size script. It shows 0 0.01 for x, 0 0.0168908 for y, and 0 0.00984 for Z. Now, what do these mean? Um, you can kind of get an idea of what they mean by adjusting the scale and seeing how they change. So I'm just going to um, grab my scale tool. I'm going to start adjusting the size of this can. If I move this up, you can see that the Y size is changing along with the Z scale. If I adjust this one, you can see that the Z size is changing. And if I adjust this one, you can see that the X size is changing. So I'm going to come out of game mode. So what these sizes actually signify is the, um, the size in meters, since we're using one unit, equals one meter of the can. Um, and it's a little bit tricky, because what this actually is is it takes a point in the center of the can, and then this is the distance from the center to the outside or the edge of the can. And that makes it actually half the width of the can. And likewise, this is half the height of the can, and this is half the depth of the can. So we, it's going to be more convenient for us to actually work with the full width, height, and length rather than half. So I'm just going to go into my script, and I'm going to take extents and multiply using star. This is the asterisk character times 2.0 f the f means float and you just have to put it there to make it work all right now i'm going to click the play button and now it's showing size as 0 0.02 0 0.0337 and 0 0.0196 now, what this means is that our can is about 3.4 centimeters tall. If you are American, that's about 2 inches. That's not the size of a soda can, any soda can I've ever seen. 
So that's too small. That's way too small. And in order to make it the correct size, first we have to figure out how big is a soda can. So you could just kind of eyeball it or kind of guess. You could look at a, you could think back to when you've had a soda can. It's like, you know, your, your hand fits around it and your hand is like, your hand is, you could like put your hand up to a soda can and it be about the length from your fingertip to the base of your hand, which is, you know, usually about eight inches, something like that. And that wouldn't be too far off. But I want to figure out exactly how big the can should be. In order to do that, we're going to go to Google. And I'm just going to Google up soda can dimensions. If I do that, in this case, Wikipedia very helpfully tells me that the US standard can is 4.83 inches high. I was really far off thinking it was eight inches actually and 2.60 inches in diameter at the widest point in the body. These are the two that we are going to require. And in order to express it in, in, um, in meters, in unity, we're going to convert it. So we're going to take 4.83, and in Google, we're going to enter 4.83 inches in meters. And this will be the desired size, 0 0.122682 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to start this running. And so I can see the current height is 0 0.33.78 meters. And I want the height to be this other number, 0 0.122682. And if I adjust the height scale, I can see it's changing the Z scale parameter. So if I enter 2 in the Z scale parameter, it'll get twice as tall. So what number do I need in here to make it exactly the right height? Well, I need to find a number such that when I multiply it by 0 0.03378, I will get the desired value. In order to do that, all I have to do is divide. So I'm going to take this number, copy it, I'm going to open up Windows Calculator, I'm just going to type in my run box, calc, and hit enter. You can also hit your start menu and type calculator, or just calc, and hit enter. And then I'm going to enter the desired size in meters. I'm going to divide by hitting slash, or by clicking on the divide key. And then I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to enter that size, and hit equals. So it needs to be 3.63 times higher than it is right now. So I'm going to copy this by hitting Control C. I'm going to go to my Z box. I'm going to paste it in there. And the can's gotten a little bit out of view, so I'm going to hit F to zoom out and get it back in the view. So our can looks very tall and skinny right now. That's because we've only adjusted the height and not the other scales. I'm going to go back here. And it said the it's 2.60 inches in diameter at the widest point in the body. So we're just going to do the same thing again. 2.60 inches in meters is 0 0.06604 meters. I'm going to go back to my calculator. 0 0.06604 divided by 0 0.02 is 3.302. And um, the depth of the can is almost the same. So the current uh, width is uh, 2 centimeters, and the current depth is like 1.97 centimeters. So they're about the same. And so I'm just going to scale them both by the same amount, x and y. And there we go. So our can is now correctly scaled, but where did the lid go? The lid is gone. So that happened because we were only scaling the cylinder part and not this, the both parts of the can at the same time. In order to scale them both, I am going to take this 3.3, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to set it back to 1. And I'm going to instead scale the can, Coca Can parent object like that. Um, the Coca Can parent object is a bit different because the Y here is actually the height, whereas the Z was the height for the cylinder. So, um, and the Z, the X and the Z are the depth for the Coca Can object. So I'm going to set those both to 3.302, and then I'm going to go back to the cylinder, grab this one, copy, set it back to one. It looks kind of crushed now. 
and I'm going to set the Y scale on the Coca Can parent object to the height scale amount. Now, if I click on cylinder, I will see that it's measuring its current size at 0 0.122682 meters, which is exactly what we want. And it's measuring its current width and depth at 0 0.06604 and 0 0.065 meters, which is about what we want. So we now have a can that has the correct scale. Now, before you forget, you are in play mode. And if you go out of play mode, you will lose your scale. You don't want to do that. So click on Coca Can, click on the gear in your component, click Copy Component, then go out of play mode. Our can shrinks. Click on the gear, click on Paste Component Values, and our can is big again. So here's our can. Now it's time to actually test it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our can in virtual reality and make sure it looks like it's the proper size of can. So if I click on my OVR player controller, I can see the viewing frustrum that shows what area it can see. I want to go ahead and take the can and just put it inside of that viewing frustrum. So I'm going to use the arrows to adjust its position here, put it kind of in front of the camera. Does it look like it's in front of the camera now? I'm just going to click on the can, hit Alt and left click drag to kind of rotate around it. And I think it looks okay. Yeah, we should be good. Actually, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. All right. Now let's click that play button. And I'm going to put on my headset. And my can's kind of down there, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my editor. Oh, come on. Where's my editor? Oh, there's my mouse. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move my can. I did not mean to move just the cylinder. I want to move the whole can. All right. There we go. So my can's here. Going to move my can up. I'm just looking through my nose hole to see what I'm doing in the editor. And sure enough, if I get the can up in front of my face and I look all around it, it looks just like the size of a normal can that I would get from a vending machine. I feel like I could reach out my hand right now and grab this can. So now we have a can that is precisely sized to the correct scale. And this is absolutely what you want to do if you have the option, if you have something that has a standard size that is pretty consistent to a lot of your audience, you want to try and make that exactly the right size. And you want to look up those numbers, you want to get it right, because that kind of thing is going to be compared to everything else in your environment. And it's really going to have a strong effect on the sense of scale. So you want to get those things right. There are a lot of other things that have a very standard size, like this Coke can. For example, credit cards have an almost worldwide standard size. Um, there are some exceptions. And um, door frames are another example. The human hand, um, despite having a large amount of variation, is actually another common example. I recommend that you definitely drop a human hand the size of your own hand into your environment because it will provide some useful sense of scale. All right. I'm going to go ahead and come out of there. And I am actually going to copy the component so it remains in that position where I put it. And paste values. There it goes. All right. So now how can we put another object into this scene by using that can for comparison? So I am actually going to drop, um, I'm going to go back to the asset store. I'm going to find something free. So to find free things in the asset store that you can experiment with, all you got to do is click on 3D models on the right-hand side. Go somewhere in here, anywhere, doesn't matter. I'm going to click on food. And then I'm going to click sort by price. And if you sort by price, the first thing that comes up is free things. Free. There's a free meat pack. There's a free bakery icon, a free all sorts candy, free old wine bottles. And I think I'm I think I'm gonna go with the meat pack. All right. I'm gonna click open in Unity. 
download. Give me that meat. And now we have our meat pack underneath meat pack and our assets. I'm just going to grab a piece of meat and I'm going to put it in here. So meat is a thing. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Are these just meat textures? No, no, this is not a meat texture. FBX? Yeah, there we go. There's some meat. All right, so meat is something that you might eat together with soda. So you probably have these two things together in front of you before in real life. So I'm going to hit the play button. And then I'm going to click on the scale tool and get ready to scale my meat. I'm going to put on my headset so I can have the best possible sense of scale. And I'm going to rotate around here a little bit. So when I looked at it in the editor, the meat looked kind of fine. I didn't see any problem. When I look at it in virtual reality, I'm like, that meat is enormous. That is the largest meat I may have ever seen. So let's see if I can. So it's a little bit annoying that the mouse turns you because you end up turning just to get your mouse back into the Unity editor. Um, I'm going to show you a trick in a minute to prevent the mouse from turning you when you're in the game. Um, and you can instead turn using the Q and E keys. And I prefer that, actually. I'm going to go ahead and show you that now because this is annoying me right now. So I'm going to come out of the headset long enough to do this. I'm going to click on my OVR player controller. I'm going to click Add Component, New Script. This is going to be another very simple script. Disable, mouse rotation, I will call it. You can call it whatever you want. Going to click on Edit Script. And I'm just going to do Get Component, hidden Open Angle Bracket, type OVR Player Controller, this will get the OVR player controller component, which is this script right here. And I will call on that, or well, I'll add the parentheses, which actually get the OVR player controller. So, and I'll type this to save the result. So var declares a new variable. And I'm assigning the result of getting that component to that variable. So that variable OVR player controller now contains the OVR player controller object. Then I'm going to type the name of that variable, hit dot. And there is a method, set skip mouse rotation. Going to type that, hit tab, open parentheses, type true to turn on set skip mouse rotation. And we're done. How did I know to do that? Well, all I did was I went to the OVR player controller script. I clicked on the gear. I clicked on edit script. And there's a bunch of Oculus code in here. And I just kind of went through it and looked for anything that seemed to be related to mouse movement or mouse rotation. And I found skip mouse rotation. I looked through the methods. And eventually I found set skip mouse rotation, which seemed like the thing I wanted. And it says, actually has a little description here. If set the true, allow mouse rotation. Also, I shouldn't have set it the true. I should have said the false, because I don't want to allow mouse rotation. OK, that's better. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start it up again. Oh, set skip. I'm sorry. I did want to set the true. So this is a little bit confusing. If you set the true, it will skip mouse rotation, which means mouse rotation will not be available. All right. OK, now I can no longer rotate with my mouse, only with my head, which is what I want. All right. Putting back on my Rift. There's my giant meat. And I can click in the game window, move around with WASD, rotate with Q&E. 
and this is plenty enough for me to navigate without my mouse interfering. So my mouse is now free to take care of the editing. So that can, relative to that meat, like I said, the meat is huge. There's my big meat. So I need to make it smaller. So I'm going to click on my meat. I'm looking through my nose hole. And I'm just going to lift it up here a little bit. Actually, I'm going to lower the can a little bit. Come down here, can. And just kind of move it over this way. There we go. Uh, I left the tab behind. Not going to worry about it. And I'm going to grab the meat, bring the meat over here so I can get them both together. Going to click in my game window, move around them a bit. So here they are together. And I'm going to resize it. I don't want a medieval sized meat. I want something a bit more reasonable. Something like. How does. This still looks pretty big, but this looks like something I could feasibly eat. Let's move them a little closer. Looking through my nose hole. So yeah, that looks like a pretty good relative size. This looks like a very large piece of meat still, but something I could still plausibly eat. It's not like the size of an entire animal. I can make it a little bit smaller, I think. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. A little bit. There we go. That looks nice to me. All right, so now we have appropriate sized meat. And... This is uh, not the kind of object that you can usually just look up the size for, although if you happen to have a piece of meat very much like this lying around, you could just get out a tape measure and measure how big it is. That would be preferable. But this is also a perfectly fine way to go about things. Take a size reference, put it next to the thing you want to size, look at them together in VR, use the size cues afforded by your headset to size them. So we're going to go ahead and remember to copy the component so that I don't lose the size. So I'm going to click on the gear, click on copy component, exit that mode. Then I'm going to paste component values. And now I have some reasonably sized meat. So that's the gist of it. Now, there are a couple things that you need to know about scaling in addition to what I've told you already. Um, so first of all, I recommend you have as many size cues in your scene as possible. And they don't have to be in your final scene. Like, you could, you could be making a fantasy series, but still have this Coke can in your scene just while you're building it so that you can use it to assess the relative size of things. Because your fantasy characters don't know what a Coke can is or how big it is, but you do. And that makes it, um, and your brain has kind of all this information stored about how big things are. And you really want to start with the things you see every day and that you recognize and know the size of. You could use um, things like the currency of your country, like a ruler, um, like the... And, and I actually recommend you measure things in your, in your own um, living environment or your work environment, things that you see every day and are really familiar to you, and just kind of replicate those in your virtual environment. And they'll serve as really effective scale cues for you personally as a developer. Um, and you can put those all under, like, you can go ahead and create a game object that's empty and call it, like, scale cue clues. And go ahead and drop your scale clues in there. And then when you want to do your final game, you can just go ahead and hide all your scale clues. Just take them away. So that's, um, and by providing yourself as many scale cues as possible, you will detect scale problems much earlier, especially if you're frequently using your headset, like I was, to adjust the size of things and to review the size of things. One final thing I want to show you is um, how to model a very common and very simple scale reference, which is a door frame. Door frames are very easy to model because they're basically just made out of three cubes. And they're very familiar and they fit in a variety of natural game environments. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new basic scene. Going to put down my plane. Going to drop in my Oculus um, my Oculus. Um, player OVR player controller where is it here it is there we go 
And now we're going to build our door frame right in front of it here. So we're going to make our door frame out of three cubes. We're going to create our first cube. Where are you, cube? Buried down there in the plane. There you are. Come on out. And when I'm I'm looking right now at my own door frame over there, at my uh, bedroom door, and it looks like it's about like it's about this wide, like about six inches wide, like um, the the actual like opening is I think about about yeah six inches wide. So that's ten centimeters roughly. That doesn't make sense. Two point five four times six is so it's about. 15 centimeters, which is 0.15 meters. So let's say 0.15 meters wide. And I'm going to put that in the, Z, in the X coordinate, actually, like that. And next, I am, need to set the height appropriately. So um, this is going to be the wall next to the door. Standard uh, height of ceilings in the US is 8 feet. I know that. And if I ask Google what is 8 feet in meters, it will tell me that it is about 2.43 meters. I'm just going to stick that in for the height. Scale, 2.43. And there we go. Actually, is this, I need to figure out if this is, um, if this is getting the right size. Hold on. So I'm going to drop my measure size script on it. And then I'm going to run. Yeah, so that's getting the size I want. It is 15 centimeters wide. It is 2.43 meters tall. So with a cube, it's very simple because it's one by one by one meter uh, by default. And so you can just scale it, and the, the uh, transform scale will always be equal to its actual size. So. I'm going to go ahead and make it so it's sitting right on the ground. To do that, I'm just going to take its height and divide by 2 and make that its Y position. There we go. I'm going to make a copy of it and put it over on the other side. And now I just need the piece at the top of the door frame. And it needs to be exactly the right size. So I'm going to duplicate this once more. It's going to be the same width. Uh, but the height and the length are going to be different. Um, so to figure this out, I just Googled up how tall is a doorway. And I found this random Google article. It tells me the width can vary from 12 to 48 inches. That's not very helpful. Uh, the height of a common door is 6 feet 8 inches. And the rough opening for the door is the door height plus two, two and five eighth inches. So I'm going to say six feet, eight inches. And what is six feet, eight inches in meters? It is 2.032 meters. So that's going to be, 2.032 is going to be the height of the doorway. But this uh, piece at the top needs to be the piece between the ceiling and the doorway. So it's actually going to be eight feet minus 6 feet 8 inches in meters. And that's going to be just 0 0.4064 meters. There we go. So that's the right size. Now it needs to get up at the top. So it needs to be about here. Um, the top of it needs to line up with 8 feet. So in other words, the Y size, um, half of the Y size added to the Y position needs to be at 8 feet. So 8 feet in meters, once again, is going to be 2.4384. And I'm just going to subtract from that half of this scale. And I get this. Plug it in, and now it's perfectly lined up. Now I need to make sure that the frame uh, width is appropriate. So how wide is the door frame? How wide is a doorway? How wide is a door? Yahoo Answers has the answer. It says, secondary exterior doors are usually 32 inches. Interior doors, which is the kind I want, are 28, 30, 32, or 36 inches. I'm going to take one in the middle. So 32 inches. What's 32 inches in meters? 0 0.8128.
All right, so that's how wide it's going to be. I'm going to put that in the Z. There we go. And now all I have to do is line up these three pieces. So I'm going to do that the same way. I'm going to take uh, this this one's. So this one's Z position is minus 1.253. And if I add half of its Z size, I will get the Z position of its right-hand side. So 1 divided by 2. Its right-hand side is at Z position point, negative 0 0.753. And then onto that, I'm going to add half of the Z size of this middle block. So 0.8128 is going to be its Z position. There we go. So now it's perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and add on another half of the Z size of this one to get to its right side. So 0 0.0598 is the coordinate of the right, the right hand side of this cube. Then I'm going to add half of this one's Z size, which is just one half. And boom, we have our doorway. And it should be just the size of a typical interior doorway. Let's go ahead and take a look in our headset. It's got that cool shadow going on with the directional light. And here's this interior doorway. It's a little bit narrow. I cannot quite walk through it at this time because I have not set up all the collisions correctly, but it does look a pretty appropriate size for a doorway. And I could go ahead and start adding like furniture to this room, and I would be able to use this doorway as a frame of reference. So it's a very good thing to build if you're building, uh, build first if you're building an interior. Whereas if you're building a like a small scene with small objects, something like a Coke can or a coin might be more useful. Just try and come up with frames of uh, scale references that are of about the right um, magnitude or, or, or about the right, so they can kind of go side by side with the things you're building and be about roughly the same size. But they're something that you're familiar with the size of. All right. That is all for today. Let me know if you have any questions about scale in Unity. Um, there's one point I want to mention, which is that scaling can sometimes affect how Unity performs dynamic batching, but it's a very complex process, and um, I, I don't want to get into all the details in this video, but if you want to know more, um, you can look up dynamic batching Unity on Google, and it'll list, um, and, and there are some uh, specific points on how uh, if objects are uniformly scaled by different amounts, um, it may refuse to dynamically batch them, which can reduce performance. So you may have to adjust the scale slightly to prevent that. Anyway, that's all for today. Let me know if you have any questions on this tutorial, and let me know if you want to see tutorials on anything else related to Unity or Unreal Engine in virtual reality. And that's all for today. Bonus round. So this is a little addendum that I made after I made the original video because I wanted to explore one additional topic related to scale. So earlier I was telling you that you should always make it so that one unit is equal to one meter. And when you're making your own games from scratch, um, I definitely recommend that. There are situations where you don't want to do that. For example, where your space is very, very large or very, very small. And then you um, you run out of precision on your or you run out of uh, exponent range on your floats, and in that case you um, you you may very well want to use a different unit scale. Um, additionally, if you are importing a complete environment uh, like this one that I just imported, this Im uh, this environment is if I go to the asset store, um, and I go I just went into um, 3D models and clicked on environments, and then clicked sort by price. And this was one of the first ones that came up. It is low poly city block. And it's a nice uh, realistic little environment with an alien walker hanging around and some cool gritty buildings. Um, took just a few minutes to import, totally free. And if I go into this environment right now and click play, put it on my head, 
I can look all around. It looks great inside VR. Um, the only catch is that the scale is not quite right. This doorway seems seems a bit too large, just a bit too large. This bench, likewise, seems a bit too large. The cars seem maybe a little bit small, but most other things around here seem just a bit too large. So maybe if I could bring it down by like 25%, that would make the scene look better. And then I could just use the reuse this entire environment. Um, the catch is that, uh, I mean, there's a couple ways to do that. One is I could take everything in the environment and scale it all down uniformly by the same amount. And that's always an option, but it can it can become very annoying to have to scale everything in the whole scene over and over again. So an alternative is that instead of scaling the world, you can scale your body. Um, and by scale your body, what I really mean is you can scale two things. You can scale your, um, your inner pupillary distance, the distance between your left and right eyes, and you can scale your height. And if you scale both those things at the same time, you will achieve an effect that is equivalent to a scaling of the world. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to come on out of here. So, um, the Oculus uh, Unity plugin does not support this by default, so we're just going to edit the code a little bit to allow this. Um, to do that, I am going to uh, go into OVR, go under scripts, and you want to look for a script called OVR Manager. Now, one of the things that OVR Manager does is managing your profile. Your profile is where it gets information about things like your inner pupillary distance and your height. So I'm going to look for profile, profile. Now, I, I already did this code, so I'm just going to take it away, um, put it back like it was before. And then I'm going to tell you what I did. So all I did was I created a new, um, a new private variable called scale. I set it by default to 1. And I added a method, a public method, called setScale to set the value of that scale variable. Very simple. I'm skipping on explaining all the details of this code, um, but this is fairly basic C sharp. If you look up some beginner C sharp instructions, you'll be able to figure out what I'm doing here. Now that I've got this variable and this method to set it, I need to do something with it. I'm going to take scale. I'm going to go into the, uh, the uh, accessor that retrieves the profile information. And when it constructs the profile information here, I'm going to just multiply everything by scale. So your IPD, your eye height, your eye depth, and your neck height, all your biometric data going to be multiplied by scale. So you can change the size of your body now, scale it uniformly by merely changing the value of scale. So I'm going to save that. Now we need to be actually have a way to change it from Unity, from the editor. So to do that, I'm going to add a component to my OVR player controller, which is just kind of the natural place to put it. I'm going to call it set scale. Going to add that script. Going to edit that script. I will give it a new pr uh, public float scale. This is going to create a property on uh, this script that I can edit inside the Unity editor. And all it is going to do is it is going to, um, in the update function, this will allow me to change the scale while I'm in the game, which, is, um, which should be helpful. And then I'm just going to set scale equal, then I'm just going to set OVR manager dot set scale. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Why is it not letting me do it? Because um, to call it using this syntax, OVR manager dot, I actually have to have this be a private, a private static float scale. Static means that you can call it using just the name of the class without having to have an instance of the class. So I'm going to do OVR manager set scale to scale. There we go. OK, so by default, that's going to be set to 1. Let me actually set it to 1 by default here. Are we good to go? I believe we are. OK. Now, if I set scale to a large number, like say 10, or I don't know, 20, just to be ridiculous, 
And then I put on my rift. Suddenly, my body has become 20 times taller. The cars look like toy cars down on the street. The buildings look like they're very small buildings, like maybe only coming up to my, not even to my waist. They are itsy bitsy buildings. And the alien walker just looks like a toy now, even though it was towering over me before. So this is a very simple example of adjusting the scale. It is as though I had shrunk the entire world without having to adjust the scale of the world at all, just by adjusting the scale of my body. Likewise, I can adjust the scale to a number less than one, like point, uh, let's say point two. This will make me one fifth my normal size. Now I am down on the ground. I'm like, I'm kind of like a cat or dog. And you can see how big this car looks now when I'm walking up to it. And it has adjusted, and the, the stereoscopy uh, actually makes this look quite a bit larger than it did before. I'm not just lower to the ground. Everything actually does look bigger than it was before. And like this bench. Before, I looked like I could sit down on the bench. Now I look like I would have to climb up to get up on top of the bench. So I am quite a bit smaller. You'll notice that I'm moving very fast when I'm small, and I was moving very slowly when I'm large. If you want to adjust, um, if you want to adjust the movement speed to suit your scale, you can do that as well. Um, you do that just by calling into um, get component OVR player controller. So you're going to grab your OVR player controller. And you're going to call it, there's a method for this. It's called set move scale multiplier. And I can just set it to the same number. And once I've done this, if I go back into it again, now if I move around at one fifth scale, I will move much more slowly. It'll be kind of like I'm a tiny person walking around on this sidewalk. So I can actually adjust the scale. I believe I can also adjust the scale while I'm inside. Let's see what happens. One. Is it going to work? That did not work at all. OK, so I was hoping it would work if I set it on the fly, but it does not. That's fine. I just have to stop and then start it again. Or stop and set it to one, and then start it again. And now I'm back to regular human size. Now, I said before that the scale of the scene was a bit too large, so I might want to bring it down to, I don't know, 0.8, let's say. Or actually, I want to make myself a bit larger, don't I? So I want to take my scale up to, say, 1.2. Then I'm going to go inside. And this doorway now looks like a more appropriate size of doorway for me to walk through. And this bench looks like a more appropriate size for me to sit down on. So I've just adjusted the scale of the world by adjusting the size of my body. Um, and you can exploit this any time you want to break the one unit equals one meter rule and set it to any size you desire just by scaling your biometric information by the correct, val uh, by the correct value. Anyway, that's all for today. Everybody have a great every day.